Hi, Ayla. Thank you so much for coming on the Power of Women Wellness podcast. We're excited to have you. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, right before we recorded, I, I love that you even said this is such a different topic. Hopefully you didn't have to prepped and it's just such a conversational chat about behind the scenes of a very successful dietitian practice and a supplement co- So feel free to share with us who you are, what do you do, what got you into nutrition and supplements in general. Sure. Okay. So let me, let me try to keep this brief. Um, so I, I mean, I, I always kind of say my conventional training, my foundational training is as a registered dietitian, like you, uh, I, in addition to that, I went on to get training in integrative and functional medicine, herbalism, women's health. Um, I, have had a private practice in one form or another for over 15 years. It evolved into a multi-clinician practice, Boston Functional Nutrition. And I focused, I really narrowed it down to specialize in women's health and infertility. And um, from that practice came Full Well, uh, which really evolved because I felt that there was a need for um different, a different kind of formula. I wasn't seeing the formulas that I wanted to see specifically in a prenatal multivitamin to really serve my fertility clients. I felt like, um, the, the doses, the forms of nutrients, nothing was really what I wanted, but I also wanted to get behind the curtains of the supplement industry and really have control over the quality and manufacturing processes. And I have learned, I mean, I've learned a lot along the way and I'm in a much better place now than even where I started with this. Um, but, uh, yeah, full well was born out of a desire to really, um, it was kind of my control freak side of things where I just wanted to have exactly what I wanted, you know? And so, Oh yeah. Yeah. Launched, launched that with the intention of, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to make a few hundred bottles. I will use it with my practice clients. I'll get better at the outcomes that I want to see. Um, but it has evolved, you know, really organically from there. Uh, you know, I had a network of colleagues who I think appreciated the formula and it's mm-hmm. just been kind of this rolling snowball since 2019 ish when I start when I really officially launched it. Oh my gosh. I'm laughing because I was like, I love your prenatal. And so we want to really re recommend to our clients as well. Um, because we we just love it. And I know so much thought has gone behind it. And I mean, we had our, and I think we started, we chatted a little bit. I had my multivitamin that is no longer a thing just because I just do not have the energy to that. That was something that is like, oh my gosh, I should be able to whip this up, you know, find Mm -hmm. the right people, find the right manufacturers. And like, it should be golden. Like, no, no. And no. as you know, like, yeah. oh my gosh, it is a terror. <laughs> and I feel like everything even post COVID was insane. And that was like, you know, this is yeah. not where I want to focus. So I'm, I'm ready to let this go, but I'm so proud of you for seeing you stay strong. Cause I just know the struggles behind this industry and it's insane. It is really, it is insane. It really, it, uh, the stress, honestly, it's been worth it. And I'm proud of what yeah. I have now because it's really allowing me to do what I love most, which is educate, um, on the importance yeah. of fertility, preconception, nutrition, and, um, and to a, a larger audience. So that's nice and, and really feel good about the products that I'm producing. But yeah, I mean, if, if I had known what I was getting into I right at in the beginning, uh, it's been a journey. Yeah, I know. It's like, you're, you're in the thick of it now. So just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's too funny, but so today I just want to chat with you and look in behind the scenes. Cause you are, you're a mom and, um, you run two companies and everything else, like, right. Your sanity and just you in general, taking care of yourself. So I want to get to know, like, what, what are you doing that helps you show up in your career? So starting with morning, what does your morning routine look like? Everything from what are you eating? What are you drinking? What are you doing for your mental health? If you're doing anything, workouts, all the things, give it to us. Yeah. Well, I would say mornings are crazy. I, you know, I've got two young kids that both need to get to different locations, (laughs) you know, right. In different ways in the morning. And it's, you know, it's kind of like the mom morning chaos, really. Um, I, I would say though, that I generally am up by like 6am. My kids are not far after me. I not, haven't really gotten a a hold on like getting up before them. That's the dream, but (laughs) they just keep moving back how early they get up. Um, and that would be nice, but I would say, um, yeah, I just, I make sure that we all have like a couple of hours before we have to be anywhere to, 
have breakfast. You know, I, I always start with hydration and I am taking care of them. I do like my espresso. So I, I have that in my, in my morning routine. Um, and I've got a nice espresso machine. It makes me really happy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, I'm mostly kind of getting them together. Um, and, uh, yeah, but breakfast is a major priority for me. I will say that I, I never skip it. If I skip it, it ruins my entire day. It like throws off the way I feel feel the way I eat everything. So, um, I'm really big on breakfast. In fact, that's probably my biggest meal. And I often have to like prep some of it, you know, ahead of time, which I will often do. It's usually like, you know, like an egg bake type thing. And then I might add other stuff. Um, yeah you know, to it, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what the morning looks like. Um, and I would say time to myself does that. I mean, I drop off my kids, get one on the bus. Right. Um, and then I'm on my way to my office, which is actually outside of my home. And I love that. I don't need it to be, wow. you know, um, I, I did start, I, I, you know, I started this, uh, I had this office space for when I really was seeing patients in person and had, um, dietitians here and we needed the space, but, um, over the pandemic, everything transitioned remotely, but I still love it. It's like having this separate place that my kids can't, you know, bring yes. yogurt and, you know, paint the walls with it. They can just like, it's like nice and clean in my space. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love that. How old are your kids? Uh, three and six. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, there, there is a time they do get, but I have a 12 and eight year old, so they definitely do get easier and mm -hmm. then they start doing their own stuff and then you have to, you know, dress them yourself. It's amazing. So there is light at the end of the channel. <laughs> yeah. I am looking forward to that. <laughs> um, but that's awesome. Do you do anything for skincare, um, in the morning at all? Oh yes. Yeah, I do. Um, I am pretty big about, I mean, I'm, I just turned 39. So skincare routine is pretty important. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would say, I, I mean, I rotate through different products, but in the morning, it's really just like washing my face, like, uh, like a vitamin C serum. And then I yes. do like, you know, some type of facial oil or I tend to get drier skin. So, and I think that happens, um, as you start to get a little older. So, um, so I, that's usually what my morning yeah, routine looks and, like. And you're in Boston though. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure like the air is much drier. So it is, it is. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And we've got weird weather. I mean, you never really know in new England, kind of what you're going to get, but it has been very dry this year. Um, yeah. yeah, we have to go there. My husband's from, he was born in Boston and it's, we, they have so much family there and I obviously we've been together like 14 years and our kids haven't even been up there. I'm like, we are slacking. Like we need to get up there, <laughs> but yeah, heard, come up and we'll go get um, some coffee or tea or whatever. <laughs> yes. I know. I heard fall is the best time to, it is, to it go. really is. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Noted. Um, and then what about your nighttime routine? Well, how does that look? And I love that you're incorporating like the mom hood in this because you know, I've had people on the podcast that are single that are just married. And then like, I love that we're incorporating some children's stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, definitely kind of defines my life a little bit at the moment, but yeah. I, yeah, I, I, so nighttime, this is where, I mean, for me, and if I had to say the number one thing I do for my own wellness, mental health, the thing that makes everything possible for me is, is prioritizing my sleep. I mean, nothing goes right when I don't, um, I, 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 I need good quality sleep and enough of it. I mean, everybody does, but I really see like that's the the first thing that I see really affect me negatively. So um really by the time the kids get home, I get home from work, we all are home. Like I try to do as much as I can in those evening hours. And then when I put them to bed, they're in bed by 738. I I do, I have kind of my routines, rituals, kind of spiritual practice. And then I nice. do kind of self-care sorts of things. It might look like um, just like a really good shower where I like dry brush. And then I'm like, nice long shower, my whole skincare routine, like everything. And I just like give myself like a whole spa thing, you know, but, um, but I'm really like in bed and trying to just wind down, you know, during that time. So like, I don't do, there's no more like household chores. I don't do work. I'm like, for the most part, um, you know, I really, <laughs> I really try to just wind down and do like self-care type stuff at that time of night. So that's like where most of it comes in for me. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. what are some of it? Is it like, uh, escaping into like a TV show, a book, like what is your fun, like wind down escape? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, let's see. So, I mean, <laughs> I actually really do like, like it's, it sounds silly, but like creating like little mini spa experiences for myself with my, you know, I it's just that. at home. It's just fun, you know? Um, and I feel like I've always done that actually, even since I was a kid, but, um, Aww. yeah. And like, I, I make a lot of, um, I don't know if, you know, I, I mean, I'm an herbalist and, mm -hmm. I make a lot of my own like skincare stuff. So sometimes it's really looks like me playing with herbs, making tea blends or like an oil infusion or like something like that. It just, anytime I'm working with plants and the herbs and like kind of my little apothecary at home, um, that's very relaxing for me. Um, so I, I often do things like that. I'm really into audiobooks for the past, I'd say six months um, or so, because I, you can kind of like, you know, walk around, do, do things, do other stuff, right. Yeah. Like while you're listening to them. So that's, that's a big one for me. Um, and yeah, I, I, um, sometimes if I really need to, I'll put on like the calm app or something as well and do like yeah. a, a meditation or like the guided sleep stories, which I adore uh, those always, those always help. Oh, I love that. I know it's so funny that you mentioned herbs. I, um, my kids are sick, so they're both home with like a little cold or flu, no COVID. I cannot believe we still haven't had COVID. And it's like been, I don't know how long, two, three years. <laughs> anyway, so I like tested. I'm like, is this it? I'm like, damn, what the heck? <laughs> um, so they're just cold flu. Uh, but I was able to, you know, in between appointments, thankfully a little bit slower day, but like finally make some like homemade elderberry syrup. And mm -hmm. man, I just remember in between jobs when I was just like a, I quit my job, fate, my second one's born. And for eight months, I was just a stay at home mom. And really that's like, I already finished my under my undergrad and, um, I don't know, I was just having fun with herbs. And I just remember mm -hmm. I had the time to, and yeah. so yesterday was such a, when I was doing it, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this feels so nostalgic. Like I used to do this all the time and I miss it. And now I'm like, I really want to get back into it. So I, I feel the same way. It's so calming. Like, with yes. Any, herbs and creating natural remedies and mm -hmm. little tinctures and just little things. Yeah. It's very grounding, you know, it is. And I yeah. have a tendency to get like a little, like if, you know, in Ayurvedic terms, like a little Vata, you know, and like kind of flitting around, like, up and I need to kind of bring myself down and calm. And so anything that grounds me is good. I actually have a crystal collection too. I love that. That's fun for me. And like, you know, just the different properties of them. That's kind of a newish thing that I've gotten into, but I haven't gotten into it. So is there science behind that? Because I know you're very evidence-based driven, which I love. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I don't know that I've gotten to the point where I've like recommended certain crystals to clients, but I think it's like, it's fun. And, you know, if anything, um, yeah. you know, there's some, you know, mysticalness to it, like, like kind of ritual to it that I think can be incorporated in that I, it could be beneficial, you know, but yeah, there are absolutely some actual properties to them. I mean, even if you look at some of like the, the chemical structure of these crystals, like it makes, it makes a lot of sense between the type of minerals that are in them and things like that. That's I'm so no cool. expert, but it is fun. <laughs> so cool. So cool. So what are some of the audiobooks that you are digging right now or how, or just ones that you think of in the past that you just loved? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I think I don't know if people would expect me to say like, you know, more entrepreneurial leadership, like business type books, but that's not like what I listen to. Hey, that's totally <laughs> fine. Just, yeah, I I actually really need. I mean, I when I'm working during my work hours, I condense a ton and I go hard. You know, I usually fit my workouts like into like that time too. But um, but at night, if I'm listening to an audiobook, it's like an escape. It's mm -hmm. a sci-fi fantasy like fairy tale type book that's just ridiculous and doesn't even you know oh, we don't want to pick it apart because it's not even written very well you know but like that's the type that's the type of book that I'm going to read so have you read um and I actually read it I didn't listen to it but uh oh my gosh I always forget the exact phrase of it's like the court and thorn I knew you were gonna say Akatar. yes yes thank you <laughs> yes yeah the, the, the acronym for it. yeah oh yeah definitely in fact I feel like that was what got me started on like that whole genre and it's just fun. okay so I am I'm a sucker for romance books like honestly mm -hmm. ladies if you need libido just read a romance book okay like there's no no way you won't read a romance book and just not be in the mood. Mm -hmm. So that's naturally what I go to and everyone kept talking about this book series and I'm like okay, I, I love that it's romance, but it's definitely a little bit different, like mm -hmm. with the fairies. And I'm like, that's usually not my type of genre. And I read the first one and I'm like, oh my gosh, it was so good. 
It was so good. Yeah, I, it's a really good series. <laughs> I actually looked into it because as I was reading, I'm like, wow, this would be an awesome TV show. And did you know they're making a TV show? I'm oh, I it. didn't. That I sounds did. great. I know. I'm like, I, I will watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, do you have any fun books though that like some of your favorite series or anything? Not I do. Though, I, I do like Sarah J. Mass. Um, like she's good. I just finished her second or maybe it was, I'm not sure if she wrote it before Avatar or not, it's Crescent City. Um, And I think the third to that book is coming out, but yeah, anything in that kind of genre I find is just a nice escape, um, you know, from reality and I can really get into it. And I like, I like, for the most part, I like them as audio books because I can just kind of listen. It's great for like, if you've got a commute or a drive or something too, really, um, Yeah. yeah, relaxing. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what about shows or movies? Is that are you more of like a listener, like audio, or do you have a typical- I don't watch a lot of TV. I really okay. don't. Um, I don't know why that is. And I, you know, I've gotten into like, and maybe this is similar, right? But like a, a Game of Thrones, you know, like when that yeah. was on, I did that. Um, but um, yeah, I actually find that TV and more so in recent years, like really stimulates me at night and I can't right. fall asleep. It affects my sleep a lot. I wear an aura ring and I can kind of see the differences. And so I don't know, I think naturally I've just noticed it's really way harder for me to wind down, even if it's kind of a relaxing show and I wear my blue light blocking glasses and all of that. So I just am not that into it anymore. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Um Okay, cool. And I know you mentioned some spiritual stuff that you do more in the nighttime. What does that look like? Yeah. Um, for me, it's kind of just, um, kind of a, a, like a, a ritual and prayers, you know, that I do, I'm not, um, part of any organized religion, but I do have just some rituals, as I said, kind of that, um, you know, where I'm kind of lighting a candle. I've got kind of a series of prayers that I go through. It kind of helps me connect to my body and then also to something greater than myself sure. and just feeling more connected in general. And I've also found it to be very grounding, which again, I, I have found that I need, I need to kind of sure. come back into my body. Um, and I think that's probably why I like some of the, like, you know, at home spa stuff too, because it's like, yeah you just need, I just need to actually like feel my body. Like, you know, otherwise I'm in my head and I'm just, you know, uh, thinking through things. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I know it's, that's such a huge part of my morning. So Mm -hmm. starting my morning, um, whether it's like Bible study or prayer, I mean that I just feel like I need that. And it definitely, you know, dictates how I am throughout the day, how I react to things, how I think about things, you know, I'm more negative. If I don't, I'm more positive if I do. So it's, it's such a pivotal part of my routine as well. So give us a little 24 hours of what you eat in a day. And I know as dietitians, um, definitely this is not what everyone should be doing, but we like to take a little sneak peek of like, what are your go-tos? So we know a little bit about your breakfast, which egg bakes actually just motivated me. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I haven't done that in a while. So <laughs> might do that tomorrow. But what are some of your lunch go-tos, dinner? Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've got chickens, so we've got a lot of eggs all the time. So it's, <laughs> that, so that features heavily in the rotation. Um, yeah, I, well, I will say I'm pretty lucky that there's, um, there's a really great little natural food health store that makes my life a lot easier because they do do great quality prepared foods and helps mm-hmm. me get in a, a much larger variety of vegetables and things like that. Cause one thing I have struggled with, with my kids at this particular age, it hasn't been like this at all phases, but is kind of the meal prep and preparing and getting it all ready. And I've tried different things for that. Um, but so for lunch, I, I usually am doing some type of a salad with protein and that, that always just kind of feels good. Um, if I'm, if I'm working, if I'm at home, it might be something else like closer to what I might be doing with the kids. But, um, yeah, I would say something like that. Um, vegetables are something I've got, I always kind of prioritize and really try to get in a lot of colorful veggies at each meal. Um, I like, um, things like, like a fun drink, like a smoothie or, um, I'll do like a herbal infusion made into like a latte, something like that in the afternoon. Um, you know, and I, that's, yeah, that's something I always kind of look forward to. Um, I really am enjoying, and I have for the past, you know, probably, well, maybe even past year, like collagen waters, vital proteins, collagen waters. I am on their medical advisory board, but that, you know, um, those are, those are fun. Those are easy. It's a nice way to get in collagen and, um, a little extra protein overall, Uh, yeah. And then dinner, dinner, I tend to keep really simple. (laughs) Um, I mean, we one pan 
one sheet meals, again, like mm. protein car, we've got different dietary stuff going on in the family. And so I usually am just trying to do things where I can pull apart components to give yes. to the kids, right. You know, have something for me, have what my husband needs, you know, so like, it tends to be easy, like stir fries and like, uh, mm. yeah, one sheet, sheet pan meals, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. With like a, a protein or, you know, a fish, a meat, uh, veggies that, yeah, that kind of thing. Nice. So no, nothing fancy, although I am a total foodie. And so if like we go out, to, I mean, I, I love food and flavors and, different yeah. things, you know, so my preference would be, uh, more flavor, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I was just a um, meal planning in this past week and I was like, oh, I feel like I'm out of ideas or just always doing the same, yeah. but I'm really good at, like, I have my like group of cookbooks. I just sift through I'm like, what sounds good this week? And I just, that just dawned on me this week. And I'm like, you know what? I just also just need to keep it simple. Like there's not always going to be this casserole that looks super delicious. And yeah. I really want it. Like, I just need to make it salmon and veggies, like simple and stop overthinking it. And so I, I found myself like, I'm totally overthinking this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And I, I love it when I can get into that. And I'm totally forgetting her name, but there's this meal prep book that I love. Oh, Cass, Cassie Jo. Oh, yes. Yeah. Her, that is a great book. And I'm not, I'm, I'm really awful at following recipes and really overly planning things out. It's just not my thing, you know, I kind of, but, um, but I find that book is fantastic. Um, oh, it's the, um, eat once. Or yes. cook once, eat all week. Yes, that one. Cook once, eat all yeah. week. Yeah, I love that one. Um, and that that really helped too when I felt like, and I, I feel like it has to help clients now too with like food budgeting because it's just so and crazy the food prices right now. And she's got yeah. things really dialed in. So I I do, I actually was meaning to pull that out because I think that helps a lot. I've also tried um Green Chef, and that was working really well for a okay. while. It's a a meal kind of component delivery service and it uses good quality ingredients and that those meals had a ton of flavor. And so that was fun, um, to do too. Nice. So yeah. you're very flavorful Are your kids like more bland. Oh yeah. 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 No, <laughs> they're, they're in the, they're in the <laughs> mode where it's like, they it's brutal. It's brutal with the picky eating and everything. And then like, you know, one will like half the meal, the other will like the other half. Right. But so, um, yeah, I don't have any secrets there other than I think, I, again, I've gotten to the point that you have where it's like, don't overthink it, just make it simple and put some components of meals where somebody's got something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I remember that stage so much. And I feel like they both hit it. And my son, obviously he's the oldest, so he's 12 now. So he's just, you can actually talk to him and like, you know, rationalize, like you should at least try it, you know, no biggie if you don't like it. My daughter's finally getting out of it, but I remember like her second year of life, to be honest, I don't know how she's alive. Um, she yeah. survived off coconut milk. Don't know why she's alive to be honest. <laughs> like, she was just so bad. We even did raw milk a little bit. So she was like very yeah. milk. So coconut milk, raw milk. I mean, that was pretty much it. Everything, yeah. everything like fruit, like the things that you think kids would love naturally, even if they are picky with veggies, like she still just was not digging it. So well, I know, I know. I like try to remind myself it's all a phase, right? And and yeah, I, yeah, I feel like for people who are listening to it's like dietitians, we can do all the right things, right? And it's still, it still is just this natural phase for a lot of kids, I think. For sure, for so, sure. I try not to stress about it. I know, and I did everything too. The smoothies, the mm -hmm. I, I've, done, I've done it all. Done it yep. all. Um, so what are I know you said you squeeze in a little bit of working out in your day. So like what's your go-to exercise? Um, Pilates. Pilates is my favorite. Um, I go, I am really lucky. There's, there's, um, like a classically trained Pilates instructor, like two doors down for me in my office. And so like, I can basically pop out of work and I go twice a week and get a really good, like full, it's totally changed my body, especially after having kids. It just feels like I feel so much better and stronger now because of it. So, um, and more aligned and, you know, everything changes after pregnancy. So, um, yeah, Pilates is, has been fantastic. I've done that, um, for about a year consistently now. So that's that I love. Um, but cycling and biking is, is huge for me okay. too. So sometimes the way that I get that in is just, um, biking to work, um, to the office or back, or, you know, I have a bike that I can throw the kids both on. And that's actually great when Ooh. they're being awful. I just strap them in and <laughs> or put them in the converse thing that I we have. That. And we just go and ride and it's like, they're happy. Usually they like need a nap or something and they'll fall asleep. Um, oh so, so that, that's kind of how I do that. And then hiking anything in the woods and outside, um, which again, 
I can usually get my kids to do two. So that helps me get it in. But my me time for the workout is definitely like my two, you know, Pilates classes. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. And like, what do you do when, I don't know, life just gets crazy. And there's obviously things that pop up when they shouldn't be like, how do you stay on track? Like, do you have things that are just non-negotiables for you? So regardless of how crazy the season is, you are Mm -hmm. doing them or what does that look like? I know that's what people struggle with is the things that pop up. Life is life. Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, I would say no matter how busy things are, even if I've got more to do, uh, there's a deadline with work stuff or anything. It could really be anything. I still am prioritizing sleep. (laughs) And in fact, I kind of do that even more so because I know that as soon as that gets compromised, everything's going to feel infinitely worse. Um, so I would say that's the biggest thing that I try to protect at all costs. Um, and also, you know, making sure that I'm not going too long without eating or drinking. Um, I mean, that's that's really important. And I really do protect even some of the extra, um, what I call kind of extra or additional types of exercising that I like to do that might fall off, but the Pilates, I've got that as an appointment in my schedule. I am charged if I don't go, I'm like, you know, it's it's generally time that I have childcare. It's like that I protect too. So even if, you know, someone is really demanding that time for me for like a meeting or whatever it is, um, I go and my husband knows like, that's really important. So, um, he'll cover two for that time. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Um, do you have any, I know you mentioned the aura ring, but do you have any other little sleep gadgets or things that you love? Oh you- yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm, um, I'm just such a sucker for all the like biohacking type fun devices just yeah. to try it, you know, and a lot of it yeah. I justify as, well, this might be something that I recommend to clients, <laughs> you know, in reality, I've just got a lot of this stuff. Um, this is a so yeah, right. Exactly. A business expense. I, I say that a lot. Um, yeah, the aura ring I've had for a few years and I adore that. I, I like it because uh, it really helped me dial in my sleep and the things that, um, affected it the most. Um, right. and so that, that I loved, but it also has so many additional features now around heart rate, heart rate variability. And so you can just kind of, you can just see so many interesting patterns and it's, um, more comfortable. I found than like the watches and things like that. Um, I also have, and again, I'm going to have to figure out the name of it, but there are these, it's kind of a sound machine, sound device where, um, you, there are two little speakers and it just, I, you know, I'm fairly new to using it, so I'm not going to talk about it intelligently, but like it really, um, it kind of sets off chimes and bells in a pattern that helps sort of just kick your parasympathetic nervous system in. And it's my daughter actually loves it too. It's been helping her fall asleep. So, (laughs) you know, it's like 60 seconds, I want to say of just listening to it. And it kind of just, you can't, if you live, if you really listen, you can't really think of anything else. So it's essentially like a, meditation support, um, relaxation type thing with sound. Um, so that I really like, um, and I also, um, I mean, I do have a sauna too, like an infrared sauna, which I love. It's out, it's an outdoor one. It's got some red light therapy in it. So that's harder for me to find the time to get in and do, to be honest, but, um, that always feels really good too. So those are some of my favorite, um, things that I'm doing right now. I think I mentioned, I also really kind of like, like dry brushing because I think that's Mm -hmm. kind of a nice ritual and feels good and supports the lymphatic system, um, you know, as well. Yeah. And you do that before every shower you would say? I try to. Yeah. Before every shower. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, and with mental health, do you have any other gadgets that you use for that? Or I know you mentioned the calm app, um, anything else? Yeah. Um, for a while I got trained in it years ago, I think when they were first were were launching, but, um, was heart math and they've got little devices you can use. It's called heart math. And it basically is a way to measure heart rate variability. Yeah. And, um, Mm -hmm. they've got some fun, like exercises and things to do. So sometimes I'll put that on, um, or again, I, I actually really like the calm app because it's so easy and we'll try to do like a meditation, especially when I'm feeling myself, I can always tell like when I'm starting to get burned out and, and stress is creeping up and my nervous system is totally out of whack. Cause I get kind of shaky. Like, you know, I can feel it in my, Mm -hmm. my body and I can even hear it in my voice. And I'm like, 
all right. <laughs> so that's when I, that's when I usually start with like some breathing mm-hmm. and r- try to like get out into nature. If I can, that's huge for me. If I'm disconnected, I, I need nature. I need the trees. I need to get into the woods. Um, really lucky where I live that I can easily access like trails, but being immersed in trees is, is an immediate, you know, stress reducer for me. So that's very helpful for my mental health. Yeah. And, and in this area, I mean, our weather, like, especially in the winter, it can get brutal, um, you know, with buried in snow, but I still just make sure to get out there. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I know mine is, uh, it's just hard to catch my breath. So even Mm -hmm. if I'm talking or I feel like, oh, but that's my big, like red flag of like, oh, I got to slow down. Like I got to change things (laughs) around. I got to stop. I start saying no, I got to get back into doing more meditation, everything, journaling, all the things. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cause so, by the time it gets to that too, you're like, you probably had some other signs, <laughs> you know, but it's, yes. cre- it's creeped up and you're like, all right, this needs some serious yeah, yes. attention. Oh, for sure. Um, do you have any favorite podcasts that you listen to? I'm um, outside of audiobooks for fun, but, and even just like past books too, that you love for business. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to open up my little podcast. Well, first of all, I do love, um, our colleague, uh, Krista Beagler's podcast, the less stressed yeah. life. She just covers really cool range of topics and such interesting, um, guest interview. Uh, there's some fun, like more feminist type podcasts that I like, like rewilding with Sabrina Lynn. Um, you know, that's a really good one. Um, a fun one. I, I was kind of getting into office ladies. <laughs> that's kind of a good, a good one. So they're the, they're the two, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting their names, but they were on the office and they have a great podcast now. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, I've got random ones like moon beaming. I mean, you can kind of get a sense of like my kind of thing. Right. Um, and that that's those, those are that. really good. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, you know, I don't, I used to be really into to business self-development type podcasts and books. And I, you know, definitely read a fair amount, but I have actually found in recent years that it's more helpful for me to, and I actually made this as a kind of a commitment to myself when I was, I felt like I was um, really looking so much for external things to tell me and guide me and tell me what I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so hiring expensive coaches and doing, you know, all these, you know, reading all these books and um, starting programs and things like that. And I, it was about a year ago and I was like, all right, this is going to be at this point, I am overwhelmed and I need to just focus on my intuition, you know, follow my intuition and just do what feels right for a while. So that's really what I've been doing. And I feel like it's serving me well. It's cut out a lot of outside noise and it's not like there isn't value to that, but for, for now, um, just following my gut, not relying on advisors and coaches and books and, you know, and trying to just do what feels right has been a good guiding principle. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. I'm in that right now. Um, not that I have that many outdoors. I also filter very well. I'm going to make sure that it's just not as overwhelming. I'm also an Enneagram eight. So like if someone will tell me what to do. It's very hard. Like I'd be yeah. very open to it or I'm very resistant, but, um, I was just talking to my husband about, I'm like, I feel like we're coasting right now and like, we're doing some things. And I think that's why, um, maybe just, it feels good. Like intuitively, mm-hmm. I know like right now it's not a coasting. We've just always grow, grow, grow. And I'm like, this is, I think the first time that I'm okay with like, we need to coast right now and then we'll grow a little bit later. And, I was like, I don't know, this feels so weird, but I'm like, this Mm -hmm. is, I feel like what I'm supposed to be doing and not just, you know, always having a soup, like always growing mindset. I mean, we're always growing, but you know what I'm saying? Just not anything crazy. Yeah. And um, it just feels good because it's not like I'm pushing, trying to push through that and trying to compare with other people and where their businesses are at. And it's just like right where you are supposed to be. Yeah. I think sometimes you have to put the blinders on. Right. Um, And I don't know about you, but when you're just so used to hustling and building Mm -hmm. and like working hard. And it's like just part of your DNA, you know, as like an entrepreneur or business owner, I mean, it can be, it can be kind of uncomfortable when you get to the coasting part to actually do that and not look for more and more, you know? Um, so that's something I've had to practice too. Yes. That's how I'm feeling. I'm like, this is weird. What what are we doing? Like, are we, this feels (laughs) really weird, but I'm like, this is what we need right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and just know it comes through seasons for sure. Mm -hmm. 
So we would love for you to share where we can support you, where we can find you. I know I'll put everything in the show notes, but feel free to say it here. Yeah. So I'm spending most of my time these days with full well, and, um, you can, you can find us at fullwellfertility.com. That's the site. And we spend a lot of time on the education that we put together there and the blog, uh, in particular, uh, at full well fertility on Instagram. I do, but minimally in, I'm on Instagram at Ayla Barmer, RD underscore RD, um, in my private practice, which, um, I'm not currently accepting clients, but, uh, that is Boston functional nutrition. Nice. And you gave us a little discount for your 10% offers purchase women empower 10. So I'll definitely put that in the show notes. And I, like I said, I love what you're doing. I'm curious, do you have anything else in the hopper outside of, I know you have your prenatal, you have your men's line, which was so incredible. I actually sent that to a couple of my patients' hubbies. So oh, good. do you have any other fun stuff coming up in the hopper that you can share? Yeah, thank, thanks. So um, yes, we, um, well, I am excited to get back into it. Also, you also can find me at WH, uh, the Women's Health Nutrition Academy, if the, any health practitioners are listening or really research savvy mm. type of um, individuals. But uh, I co-founded that with Lily Nichols and we're finally after a bit of a hiatus getting back into doing some really big webinars. We try to um, pack a lot into those. And so we've got some really great topics coming up in October, November, and then beyond. So I'm excited about that. Um, wow. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm really working on getting out there and educating there. There may be a collaboration um, with vital proteins, you know, uh, coming down the pike. So there is definitely some really, I'm 2023 kind of getting all my ducks in a row for the rest of uh, this year. And then 2023, I think it's going to be a really big year for full well. So yeah. That's exciting. Um, yes, I have done a couple of your webinars and when you say they're jam packed, they are jam packed. <laughs> so I will fully attest to that. So they, awesome. they take, uh, they take a ton of work, but I, we're always, we're always pretty proud of them. So we're going to get back into those. Awesome. Well, thank you. Oh, wait, wait, we got a lightning round where it's either or. So you just choose either or. Okay, <laughs> let's forget this. All right. So let's get started. Uh, strength training or cardio? Cardio. City or countryside? I feel like countryside. Country. <laughs> yeah. um queso or guac guac uh pancakes or waffles waffles romper or dress dress nice I know you don't want to feel naked when you're yeah. being both for the romper <laughs> yes right I do have I do have both but <laughs> I prefer dress well awesome thank you so much for coming on today oh thanks for having me <laughs>